Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Empowered Hormones podcast. I'm your host Sheridan Decker and I'm so excited to have you here with me today. If you're new here, if you haven't listened to a podcast episode before, welcome. Thanks for coming along for the ride. This is episode 156. So there's a few behind me now, which is great. If you ever feel like going back, there's lots of different podcast episodes uh, covering different things from bloating, fatigue, thrush, period pain, constipation, root cause testing, hormone testing, stool testing, my health journey, clients' health journeys. So the best way to go back and listen to episodes, I find, is jumping into Spotify and then if you listen on Spotify, which I do, uh, but you can probably do this in any platform because the podcast is everywhere. Use the little search button and then just search for something because usually I have it in the title. Like say you're struggling with SIBO, just pop SIBO in or immune conditions, pop that autoimmune in, bloating, constipation, whatever it is, it should be super helpful for you because sometimes I do get asked or not sometimes I do get asked a lot of questions on Instagram about a lot of topics that I have chatted about in the podcast episode and it's really hard to give you guys proper advice over DMs just because I get so many messages every single day so sometimes I just don't have the time to unpack it properly with you which is usually when I'll send you a quick voice message um, or I'll send you a resource like if it's around constipation I have lots of free constipation resources if you're starting to try and figure out what's going on with your gut then I have a really great gut health quiz I have the gut health uh, what's it called gut health solutions Facebook group um, and I also have some short webinars courses and things to kind of ease you into making changes if you're not ready to fully commit with uh, to working with me and to running your stool testing, your Dutch testing, your SIBO breath testing or comprehensive bloods together. So that's just a little taste of things you can do which are just going to help improve your life that little bit more. Now today we're chatting about functional blood testing to uncover root health issues. So this is something I do ask people a lot when they reach out to me and be like what have you done what have you tried and have you done functional blood work? Because a lot of the women I'm chatting to are healthy, like quote unquote healthy. They're doing a lot of things to support their health. They're very switched on, they're active, they've seen GPs, they're asking questions, but they're not quite getting the answers and they're definitely not getting the results they deserve. So my first thing is what have you tried? If you haven't done functional blood work, definitely start there. That's it's always going to be better working with a practitioner and doing this stuff because you're generally going to get better results. It's like having a program when you go into the gym or a personal trainer or joining a structured class. You're generally going to get better results than just walking into the gym and being like, cool, what am I going to do today? I might sit on the leg press. I might do some kettlebell swings. I might do some sprints. Maybe I'll do some push-ups. There is no structure, no plan, no accountability, whereas depending as to where you're at, like someone like myself who has a strong exercise background, for me, I can get a program and I work with Libby Westcombe and I have a program, 12-week program, and this is what I'm following and I'm progressing and I'm fine with that. If you have no exercise history, you might want a personal trainer or you might want, you know, um, quite a structured class so that you have that constant sort of feedback and that's where I find out who really needs the in-depth support. Uh, so most women who I work with haven't done in-depth stool testing, like a three-day GI map test or SIBO breath test, so small intestinal bacteria overgrowth test or a Dutch hormone test, so dried urine collection test. Most women have just done um, your standard GP blood work. And what I want you to understand that if you're having trouble getting all the pieces of your health together and you're jumping from practitioner to practitioner, you really need to approach your health the way you would with anything, the way you would with building a house, the way you would with your physique goals, the way you would with a complex work project. You need to go, okay, what, what have I done? What's not working? What's not working is the fact that I've still got trigger foods. I'm eating well, 
and I'm still getting bloated, I'm still getting constipation, I still get really tired in the afternoons, which makes no sense because I, you know, am mid-30s and I should not be having that level of fatigue. <laughs> I'm not in my 80s. So it's starting to work those things out. Same with the painful periods and things. You want to be tracking them, have that data and be like, okay, what am I missing here? Because often you're not actually missing a dietary component you're missing finding out what the root cause is. Yes, within a couple of weeks of joining the root cause program, you will make changes to your diet, which is going to give you dramatic shifts in your symptoms and you're going to feel really good. But that is just a supportive element. The nutrition side of things that we approach inside the root cause program is working on your metabolism, your minerals, your nutrients, your energy, and supporting your gut health. It's not diagnosing what the root cause is, and that's where your testing comes in. So that's where your functional blood work is really important, your stool test, and your comprehensive hormone and thyroid testing is really, really important. So what do I mean by functional blood work? Now, we're trying to find what systems within the body are struggling and if there's nutrient deficiencies, because at the bottom of everything, of every pillar of your health, hormones, thyroid, metabolism, gut health, you need to have good nutrients, good minerals, and you need to be able to absorb these things as well. So the functional blood work we're looking at is a full thyroid panel, including your thyroid antibodies. So that means reverse T3, T3, T4, uh, free T3, free T4, TG antibodies, and TPO antibodies, and your TSH. I have a podcast on these ranges and what ranges you should be in for these. So you're welcome to go back and listen to that. But you need to have the whole spectrum when it comes to your thyroid, not just TSH. You need to have a look at your white blood cell count. So this is with the differential. So we need an overall sense of immunity, possible infections or imbalances. We need your vitamin D uh, levels between 60 to 80 NG slash ML. So I'm just giving that for reference for you guys. We need your ferritin. Ferritin combined with a full red blood cell panel is an important check for energy, okay? Especially in things like mold or bacterial overgrowths. So your iron stores, that varies a lot from practitioner to practitioner. We like them around 30 to 80. Your HA1C, your fasting glucose and your insulin are really, really important, especially with fatigue and weight and also metabolic type conditions like PCOS. Your testosterone, DHEA, estrogen and cortisol, they are really, really important for understanding your whole hormonal picture, your adrenal output, um, ovulation, period pain, acne, weight gain, trouble um, building muscle, low sex drive, all those things, especially skin concerns as well, are linked into these four. Your Epsom bar viral panel, this can be really important, especially if you're looking at mold. Your autoimmunity testing can be really important as well. And then food allergies and sensitivities are something that I sometimes run depending on the client. But usually I will have done a stool test by that point and or a Dutch comprehensive hormone test. So they are the key bloods. The other things also zinc, copper and B vitamins I find are really, really important for stomach acid and understanding as to why you have reoccurring infections, why you're getting bloated, constipated or not breaking down food properly. So that's a snapshot of functional blood work. These are not things that your GP will run or your general practitioner or your doctor will run with you. You need to either go and see an integrative or functional GP or you order them privately. So with a lot of my clients, we order a lot of those testings privately to ensure we get the tests that you want. Sometimes your GP will run some of the things. They won't run all of the things. Now, functional lab testing is, the, is my favorite part of what I do just because it does give you solid answers as to what's going on. The blood work is a foundational element of coming into the root cause program, so it is something that we do on everyone. 
and then you step into your more comprehensive uh, testing options. So we do a GI map, so that's to troubleshoot digestive issues. The GI 360 is one of my favorite ones as it collects over three days and it looks for parasites, worms, candida, H. pyoli, bacteria of the large intestine, pancreatic health markers, enzymes, fat digestions, um, beta-glucuronidase that looks at estrogen, a phase 2 detoxing, and zonulin, which is a leaky gut marker. This test can be run by men or women, but obviously I work uh, with women. And this test is great for anyone struggling with autoimmunity, chronic digestive complaints like IBS, constipation, loose stools, chronic inflammation, mood or hormonal issues, leaky gut syndrome, and definitely any kind of skin concern because often we see dermatitis, psoriasis, eczema all linked to either SIBO, so small intestinal bacteria overgrowth, or something going on in the large intestine. So like I said, everyone does the functional blood work and then 99% of women in the root cause program will do a GI map, so three-day stool test, and then probably like 75% also run either a Dutch hormone test or saliva hormone testing. Dutch hormone testing is key. I have a YouTube video uh, breaking this down, so you can DM me on Instagram if you want the link to that or jump over to my YouTube channel or jump inside the Gut Health Solutions Facebook group and I can tag you in it in there. But the Dutch Complete Hormone Test is a favorite because so many people have annoying chronic hormonal symptoms and you really want to understand why. So if you're making too much hormones or not enough testosterone, then we get symptoms like the heavy periods, the weight gain, the low sex drive. So the Dutch testing looks at estrogen, testosterone, progesterone, DHEA, cortisol, melatonin, some vitamins, neurotransmitters, and also organic acid markers like your B vitamins and more. There's more things like glutathione, but you can jump onto their website and have a look at a sample report if you want to know more about that. This test, so there are a couple variations of the Dutch test. I use the Dutch Complete or the Dutch Cycle Mapping for women. And we really use it for estrogen dominance, difficult menopause, menopause, sorry, low energy, weight loss resistance, infertility, PMS, period problems, insomnia, anxiety, and skin concerns like acne, especially like the own low energy fatigue is an awesome one, but also that imbalance between estrogen and progesterone is really great to see where, quote-unquote, the energy, the hormonal energy is pushing down different pathways. With acne and skin conditions, it's really helpful because it looks at whether it's testosterone or your DHTs, so your strong androgens, or your low uh, estrogen or progesterone that may be causing the skin concerns. So, They're the main functional testing that I use. The last one would also be the SIBO breath test. So that's just looking for methane or hydrogen dominant SIBO. They're your two main types of small intestinal bacteria overgrowth that we get. There is more to unpack. I'm simplifying that a lot with SIBO, but I do have a lot of podcast episodes around SIBO, so I won't go into that today. But like I said, functional blood work is the starting point. So start with that. If you don't have a good GP who's going to run that, work with a practitioner like myself or someone similar who can help you with that testing and unpacking them. And then also consider diving deeper. So whether that's stool and Dutch or stool and some kind of hormonal panel, it's going to be really, really important for you to get to the root cause of what's going on with not only your bloating, your constipation, your fatigue, but also things like your skin concerns, your periods, weight loss, those sides of things. If you're curious about using a root cause approach and working with me, I will link into the show notes the way I work and you can book a gut health planning session with me. So it's about 15 to 20 minutes. We unpack what you've tried, what you haven't tried, what's holding you back and create an action plan for you moving forward. So there is no strings attached to that. It is free. You can spend that time with me unpacking. And then if you decide, hey, yeah, this is the direction I want to take, 
you're more than welcome to look at working with me. But either way, you'll walk away from it going, oh, okay, cool. That's what I haven't tried. That's what I need to do. Because that's when most women are stuck. They actually don't know where to next. They don't know the financial cost of it. They don't know the pros and cons. They're not willing to invest when they don't know what the outcomes are going to look like. Whereas when you invest in a program like my six-month program, you know you're going to walk away tolerating more foods again, having done the testing with more energy, better periods, better bowel movements, because you're within that container of practitioner care for those six months. So I hope that was helpful. <laughs> Lovely to connect with you. I would love to hear from you on Instagram or inside the Gut Health Solutions Facebook group. I just, yeah, I love having their hands-on knowledge with guys and being able to chat on Instagram and go, okay, cool. Here's some things that are going to help you, whether testing is your right now or whether it's something you want to do later and you're saving up for. It is an investment doing it and you want to go in going yep cool I'm ready I'm committed and I'm ready and I'm excited it's no fun jumping into this kind of stuff if you're not excited and you're not ready to get answers it's not fun for me it's not fun for you so have a look look at booking a health chat with me if you want to get some one-on-one help I'll pop the link in for that as well And otherwise, please share, rate, review this podcast episode. It helps me get the word out there about functional testing. It changed my life. So going from someone who was having no periods for seven years, one bowel movement a week, chronic acne, chronic psoriasis, chronic fatigue syndromes to someone now who trains twice a day, eats a lot of carbs, um, has regular periods, whose skin can flare up at times, but I want to say 80% of the time, it's really good. So it's, yeah, it's just something that really changed my life, which is why I'm so passionate about educating and empowering other women to get answers so that you don't do what I did and spend 10 years being constipated, chasing different practitioners, being gaslit by so many crackies and so many doctors saying, no, 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 you should be fine. You should be fine. Or you're pretty healthy. It'll work out. It didn't work out till I did the testing. So I hope that was helpful. Please reach out. I love hearing from you.